is an enemy. There we go. All right, beautiful. The first time I did a presentation, uh, Charlie suggested that the next time I do one, I do it without reading. This one I've done without preparing. <laughs> Um, last Sunday, I had some time to kill at my office, and so I started scanning some slides, and I thought, well, I'll do the ones for the date, and since we're talking about the date this week, and I think it was on Monday, I suggested to Mike, if he had some time to fill, I could show the slides. So, um, I really haven't even looked at these to speak of. This is a picture of the Dayton at Montello on its way from Promontory. The museum, the state of Nevada bought this, I believe it was in 1974, when it bought the two locomotives that were back in Promontory. It stayed back there until 1978. And this was a picture taken on its way to Carson City. Uh, this is the tender being unloaded in front of the shop. I believe uh, I see a headlight and probably a smokestack in the back of the tender. Um, unloading the truck. This is the cab that was on it when it arrived, and this is the old cab that, that is in the back in the annex. Um, again, this is 1978, out in front of the shop building. This picture is taken in the summer of 79, no, the summer of 81, when they're starting to do the restoration work on the locomotive. 1981, I was still driving log trucks. This is the summer they hired Chris DeWitt to work in the shop. He was working for Shortline Enterprises. This, all the shop work at the time was being done by Shortline Enterprises. Uh, this is the year that, that Greg Corbin, who's our current director, came over to the museum from, the, uh, from state parks. Uh, and you can all figure out where you were in 1981. That's the cab back there in the back that they've taken off. Um, truck frame. Is that car nine behind it? Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> there was actually a lot of stuff being done at this, sum this summer. Um, this was the second summer the museums was open. Uh, I believe it was the first summer for CSRM. Yeah, we opened in 81. Um, inside the shop, um, just some of the lumber piled up. Boiler's been stripped. That's the cab again. Um, I'm curious what happened to this. It, I, it may still be around without the paint job. Uh, the little shop truck they're using. <coughs> The oil tank that came out of the tender, um, pieces of the stack. Sandblasting. The lagging that's on it now is wood. Uh -oh. It's non it's a non-functional boiler, so the wood is basically just a spacer. The new cab that was built. Tender frame, hello, I think. Tender, tender frame, what happened? The green? No, it's the microphone that died. Use the one on the stand. See, oh, wow, stand, work? Oh, okay. Oh, now it's, now it's. Yeah. Now it's yeah. You can hear it banging around. Yeah. I can hear it banging. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. I don't have really anything worthwhile to say. I'm just showing you pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was one body discovered inside the tender. <laughs> <laughs> the toolboxes. Starting to come together. Uh, this is approaching uh, December, as I recall. It's amazing how fast this restoration was done. Started in the summer of '81, and they're done 
uh, by the spring of 82. They've got paint on the tender at this point. Starting to letter it. We're back in business. Now I'm in stereo. <laughs> this jacket was painted. This was before they started bluing. Uh, the problem with the jackets is always trying to figure out how to give it an authentic appearance um, uh, for Russia iron. We've got some samples that Ron Steiner did of the different different uh, different paint colors that he wanted to use or that they tried for the jacketing. Um, the cab is painted. At this point, this is in back of the shop, and it's coming together. Back inside, I believe that's the 1013 behind it. That's the 105. Oh, that's the 105. Thank you. CP car. The bell, bell bracket, sand dome. Some of these are dark. I don't like skin and slides anyway, but um, that, that's the toolbox that's on the, on the pilot deck. Uh, this is out front of the shop building. That's Bill Odin. Um, rods are not on it yet, but it, this is early. This is in the winter of, six, of 82. Pilot's not on. Back head. This is in May of 82, where they move it from the shop over into the annex. The turntable was not built yet, so they had to bring in a low boy to move the locomotive and tender. The trailer is actually inside the shop, and I believe they're using the, the, uh, the tractor from the, the low boy to pull the tender up onto the low boy. Backing it into the annex, I believe that's Shirley Berman. And they roll it off the low boy, rolling it toward where the turntable is, then they take the trailer out and back it in. Doing the same thing with the locomotive. Heavily weathered. Uh, yeah, and, and they're outside the building. It wouldn't have fit through the doorway on top of the trailer. <laughs> the, the, notice the steam dome cover is not yet on it. Uh, they moved it over before the locomotive restoration was totally complete. We need to start on the engine. This may be out of order, actually. That's, that's the locomotive moving from the shop to the annex, and that's obviously where the turntable is today. Once the 18 was in the annex, the 25 went back in on top of it. Incidentally, that flagpole is from the V&T v facility. I don't know if it was out of the shop or off the depot. It had gone over to Placerville, and one of the first things was donated to the museum when the museum was opened. Um, it's the one that's still there outside my office. This is one of the, uh, Don Bohal's pictures taken at the same time. Oh, this was for February of 82, so a little bit earlier than I had stated. In, in its new position in the annex. This is in May where they pulled it out for the opening. Back in those days, the museum was only open from May through Nevada Day. And uh, so this is one of the events in May, uh, May of 82. 25 is under steam. <coughs> Am I done? No, not quite. Um, this is um, inside the annex. The the date is on the on the right. Is this going to be the Indio on the left? The way it used to be sitting, sitting in those days. 
coach for Dick Dayton, and uh, it's got to be Rich Rittenauer. It sure stands like him. I didn't realize he was working that long ago. No, it's not Rich. It's, it's not the other man. Man. Okay. One of the bull hall pictures of both locomotives out in front. This is uh, after the, the turntable was put in. Inside the interpretive center, this is 1990, um, after that building was built. This is, uh, these are a couple pictures taken from the year that they used the Dayton in the Nevada Day Parade, where they're loading it on the truck. Chris and Rick in the foreground. Ron Allen. And then it got moved up to Virginia City. Um, Earlier there, you were showing some, uh, pictures of that move. I've only got a couple of pictures of taking it up to Virginia City. Um, this is loading it for that trip and unloading it uh, at Virginia City where you'll see it tomorrow. Um, the pictures I don't have are left to find where it ran into the trailer. They, they, <laughs> they, they pulled it out for photographs one day and they forgot to take any brake clubs and the track slopes away from the building and they couldn't slow it down and it ran the length of the track. And even though the locomotive's been out of service for years, it was involved in a vehicle accident. <laughs> ran into the trailer, the highway patrol showed up. There was a big scene. Uh, but apparently nobody with a camera. Uh, a couple other pictures, Shirley Berman, Dick Dayton, Guy Dunscombe, Bob Dockery. This is still at the out in front of the museum when it was down there. Uh, Bob Verkheil and Bill Odin. Bill died in 83, so this predates that picture. Uh, after Bill died, Bob Verkheil was sort of the, man the short line manager at the shop. And I think I'm done at this point. I think that's it. You can have lunch now. You have lunch.